Hello, I'm Kylie Olson and this is Life in Six Strings. Now I have a load of interviews up here for you to just kind of disappear down a hole to. Um, let's face it, I'm getting a bit bored of Netflix so maybe there's something on here that might sort of float your boat. Uh, I've got loads of great interviews coming up as well. So please subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. All you need to do is click the link below. Thank you very much. So I'm really excited um, about my guest today because he has had one hell of a career. Not only is he in the extremely successful Toto who have sold more than 40 million copies worldwide, but he's also one of the most sought after session guys. And he's played on tracks um, with the likes of Aretha Franklin, Stevie Nicks, Elton John, Joni Mitchell, and most notably, Michael Jackson's Thriller album. He's been nominated for 12 Grammys and he won five of those, which blows my mind. Um, so I think it's hard to name another guitarist that has had a more varied career than the incredible Steve Lukather. So Steve, why guitar? Why guitar? Uh, Beatles, Ed Sullivan, 1964. Sorry, changed everything. Never thought in a million years that, uh, you know, one day I would be friends with, you know, work with three of the four, you know, and yeah. be really close friends with Ringo. So the mathematical odds are staggering. No, it's crazy, isn't it? That's quite nice, though, for you. Um, so I've been reading your book and it's... Uh -oh. Uh oh I know, but I'm only in the beginning, so... Um... And I love it. And oh, what, the impression that I'm getting is that it was so easy for you, the guitar. Like literally, you you just well, you just sort it of, wasn't, just, and then it was. You know, it, I don't know. It's just always been a part of my life. It's like I can't imagine a life without it. You know, it's single digits. You know, I was it, in a band when I was nine. I know. That blew my mind. So, I mean, was there anything that you really struggled with? Yeah, everything else. <laughs> everything else. And it's yeah. still a struggle. So it's your savior in a way. Well, you know, it gave me my uh, identity, really. George Harrison, you know, my first guitar hero, my friend, God bless his soul. I got to hang out with him for a few years. We were hanging out all the time. He's the greatest guy. You know, I can't believe it. I mean, it's, you know, I I still pinch myself sometimes, you know. I can imagine. So what, so what was the record that changed changed it all for you then? Well, Meet the Beatles, you know. Yeah. Anybody my age will tell you that, you know. And so what was it about George Harrison as a guitar player then? Down, this, this is the way it just hit something in my soul. I said, I got to make that noise, man. I got to figure out how to do that. I want to be that guy. The lead, you know, the, you know, just the sound, I mean, you know, if you listen to it now, it sounds so simple. Mm -hmm. It was like aliens and landing in the backyard at the time. You know, it was like, what is that magical sound? These electric sound coming at me from this wonderful. It just all, Life went from black and white to color, you know? Yeah, and you, and you say that you got to work with him. I mean, did, yeah. you, did you did you learn anything from him when you worked with him? I mean, was there anything sure. you were like, oh, that's how he does that? Or Well, it's just a process. It's, everybody has a process of how they make their music or how they come up with it, how they enjoy uh, the, the way they record. And of course, the Beatles are like, everybody looks to them still to this day as the, you know, the Bible of music, of popular music, you know? And uh, so, you know, we make references to like, I need a beetle thing here. And, and it conjures up something in somebody's mind. You go, oh, okay. Like, well, what would George, you know, and all of a sudden you go into that place because you've studied and enjoyed it. Part of my DNA, you know? Um, it's funny because you, when I, again, when I was reading your book, you, there was um, one of the first songs you learned was Gloria by them. Yeah. Which was the first song that I learned as well. And it's one of those songs that you just, three chords. Well, back then, if I, the yeah. fact that I could play anything at all as a kid was I was an alien. You know what I mean? People are like, how do you do that? I'm going, I just, I don't know. It just makes sense to me. You know? Yeah. And uh, 
in fact, I could strum along and learn the songs and get it. And I had rhythm and it just fell naturally to me. I, I God gave it to me. I, I, it's not me. I'm not that smart. Is it true your, um, your, your mum and dad made your first guitar into a lamp? Yeah, it's in my living room. That's nuts. That's brilliant. What is it, an acoustic? Yeah, it's a probably five, probably paid a dollar for it. It's five bucks for it back then. Oh, I love it. That is such it's a, a cool K, It's a little K acoustic. I mean, it's, 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 I can't believe anybody would pass it off as a guitar, but it's, you know, when I die, I guess it'll be worth a lot of money or something like that. It's the first guitar I ever got. My parents gave it to me, gave, put a little plaque on it. She just yeah. Put Oh, how nice. That's lovely. So whenever you put the light on, you just think of that, those when you first started. I look at it sometimes in a, in a lucky penny on the top, you know, that just came out of heaven. You know, it's like, you know, these things you just. Does it take you back to those early days when you look at it? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, it makes me realize I've been on earth a long time. <laughs> well, look, I was thinking that but before the interview started. Yeah, because you understand, I was there in real time. I mean, I went through the rock and roll real time. Like the when Beatles hit from everything that happened from that to moment on to now it was my it, life. And I am so jealous and envious that you got to be there at that time when music was just best, at best of times, man. I live the best um, life. You have for sure. And of course, so so you started playing guitar and they, like you said, in a band at like nine, which blows my mind. Yeah. Um, you had a cool upbringing, like hanging out, like hanging out in this pack of incredible kids that went on to do amazing things in well, music. I met them later in life. I mean, there was a few kids in the hood that could play. They were older than me, you know? So I was always the youngest guy, you know, teaching everybody their parts. Yeah. I love and, it. Uh, it was just always that way, you know. And really, you, I, you, you, I always had this one. I always had this one thing. I'm gonna do this. There was never a doubt. I never had a moment of like, it's not gonna happen. Really? Why? Yeah. Why? Where do you think that driven? Came? Driven. Yeah. Yeah. It was I like guess. blinders. Like, there's just no way this is not gonna happen. Yeah. And I just buried myself in it and. So when, you were, so when you were around all your friends, you know, who you then went on to form a band with, Toto. Um, well, that was high school, you know. <laughs> yeah. Did you, um, was it kind of, do you think that it helped being surrounded by all of these musicians as well? Well, yeah, because it was competitive. Yeah. Okay. There was always somebody who was the best guy. You wanted to be better than the best guy, you know. Yeah, so there was, it was like sports and people want to be, but, you know, but music I was terrible at sports, but I was good at music. So Maybe. I would always seek out the best players or find out guys who, could, who knew how to play the certain, show me how to play the Hendrix thing or show, you know, some older guy, you know, mm -hmm. who figured it out, you know what I mean? And I'd just go, ah, and I'd be this little kid that could do it, you know? So it became a little freakish back then. Now it's like commonplace, but you know. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's kid is a fucking starts out learning a rupture like they fucking invented the guitar like Ed Van Halen's a parlor trick but it's not Ed was making music he didn't realize he was, you know, what he, no, he was an innovator part. you guys were in a, you guys started it didn't you you started the trend and you know and like you say everyone I didn't, I didn't. Ed did you know but uh you know he was a dear friend of mine I miss him terribly yeah Hope I can I, imagine every day I have a broken heart Sure. 40 years, 40 years of, like that, you know. And you made some great music. A lot of life together. So is it true that when you did beat it, that you hadn't heard the solo that Eddie did? They didn't send the solo, no. So you, had, just, you, did, you hadn't heard what he had done on the, on the track? He had, already, he had already played. There was another version of the song. We had to remake the record around Michael's lead vocal and Ed's solo and a trap case on two and four. And bleed through the microphone of the headphones. Jeff Picaro and I put that record back together. So, what did you think when you heard the finished piece then with Ed with Ed Solo? Oh, it was great! I thought, yeah, you know, Ed. I said, I said, I laughed and I called him up and said, "Oh, I guess you're a studio guy now, huh, Ed?" You know, and we tied it to, ah, no, man, man, my brother's really mad at me that I did this. <laughs> it's like, you know, and it turned out to be what it is. You know what I mean? 
So I'm part of that history. So it's kind of nice. To, nice to be part of that history, though. Nobody ever mentions my name, but if it's a, you know, I'm still there. That's not true. People do mention your name for sure. No, but you know, I mean, like you know, it's I was like Eddie Van Halen. You know, he did the solo. Yes, he did. It's brilliant solo. You know, no, he cut you... the tape and fucked up the safety code so they couldn't resync the stuff up. So we had to remake the record. Frankenstein style. So you start, you know, started playing as a kid. Then you went on doing session work. Well, yeah, I didn't know what that was until high school. You know? Yeah, and, and so what's it, the Picaro family? Was it something that you were this? So what was it like? What was your goal? Because you say you had this focus. Well, I wanted to be a professional musician. You know, and I, how did you do that? that? And my parents were like, "Yeah, yeah, you're gonna be a rock star, sure, right?" You know, needle in a haystack and all that. So they, but being a real musician meant you had to read music, you had to be able to do anything as a musician. Yeah. You want to be a musician, you got to play anything. Yeah. What, you got to play weddings, you got to play this, you got to do this. So you can make a living as a musician. Whereas today, you really can't. There's no place to do that because everything's computerized. Yeah. But back then, that was a viable, the, the next door neighbor was a musician. He was a drummer and he had a house. He bought out. My father goes, Well, he's not famous, but he's a musician. He has a house and a wife, you know. So he thought, well, okay, be like that guy, then, then fine, you know? Yeah. So, so this, that so motivation mixed with like meeting Jeff Beccaro and going, wow, I just met like hippest guy I've ever met in my whole life and ever will be my whole life. Um, and it was magic and I just wanted a piece of that. And so yeah. I studied real hard to see if I was good enough to get into it and Eventually, I fell into it. I, it's a magical time in my life. For sure. And it's not, I mean, being a session guy is, well, it's, it's, I think it's one of the hardest things to do, isn't it? I think it's a lot harder well, than being in a band. I mean, you tell me. People don't understand what the job is. I mean, you know, they think we just sit and read the parts. I mean, a lot of it was like we created the parts on the spot. We were arrangers. They just write chord symbols and rhythmic notation. And we come up with our own parts and find a little groovy little hooky part. We'd come up with that. Since I could do that all the time, they kept kept hiring me. You've I got could read music, you've but got most of the music. stuff I could read music, but most of the stuff was fill in the blanks, play a solo on the spot. How fast can you do that? Can you do it under pressure? You know. And you've got a reputation of being, you know, one take wonder. You go in and you. Well, there was a time when I could get away with that. You know, you know, you know I was pretty hot. You know, I was a fool of myself, I guess. I just, it was, it's just, I heard it, I played it, they liked it, I left. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, if you like that, that's great. And I have to go and did one take and I was out. And then it became a thing amongst the studio guys. It was like, how many takes did it take? You know, <laughs> it, it, was, it was a, it was a competitive, healthy, funny, competitive wonderful club to be in you did some tracks with jeff beck didn't you i did in 1997 and what happened to those he didn't want to go in that direction he wanted to go in a, a completely different direction so he scratched the record it was sad but i mean he's still my favorite guitar player i mean he's the you know he's the governor man he's the, he's the guy you know it's like yeah, i got yeah. to see it up close and he we had a great time. We were great friends, and I miss him very much. I haven't seen him in a long time. So I'm in Holland a few years back. We didn't really get a chance to hang. We just sort of, you know, when, when it all fell apart, it got weird with the business, and, and his managers were, I'm not going to say anything else. I just get sued every time I talk, so I'm gonna, I'll let it go. But, uh, you know, he's probably the greatest living, like, solo guitar a guy that uses the, the, the guitar as a human voice. It's not even a guitar, it's his soul. He uses the guitar to give his soul to the world. I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's very magic. Good. He's magic. Yeah, no, I agree with you. He is. He got a little, he got a little extra. God gave him a little extra. That's all I can say. <laughs> I was honored to be around that. I respect him. And he's a funny motherfucker too. Yeah. And you can't convince him. You can't convince him to put those those tracks out. Uh, uh, no, I, and I would. Uh, it's not my right to do so. Oh, I'd love I, to hear. I, 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 it's a shame because it was a wonderful highlight experience in my life. But you know, yeah. he, he, as an artist, he has a right to choose what he wants to do as an artist. You know. No, I hear I you. Never, I would never do anything to betray that. You know even though I was accused of something a long time ago that I've never did, but whatever. 
that was a long time ago. Uh, anyway, next. Are you still doing sessions? No, not really. I mean, I mean, what did I do? Last thing I did was Mark Letary from Snarky Puppy. Okay. He was a brilliant guitar player. Wow, yeah. scary good. Uh, he asked me to play something on his new record. I said, come on, what do you want me to make you look better? <laughs> what do you need me for? Uh, and, and he laughed. He goes, no, nah, I just want a little flavor. I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. I did it for nothing. I did it for free. I did it just as like, did I dig it? I yeah. love this. Song. You got, I stole his drummer's spot. Yeah. so you felt like you owed him one i owed him one yeah, yeah yeah and you've got and you've got a new album coming out um, i do at the end of february uh you've worked i mean you it's with joe it's, it's it's kind of a double album well, joe joseph is putting one out and you're putting one out but you're kind of well is there a double i mean i suppose if you put them on shuffle you'd be an interesting listen but we both worked on each other's records we're both part of each other's lives and yeah he's like closest friends of life you know and uh we're going to tour together as toto and representing the whole catalog and our solo stuff and our stuff and it just made sense we always wanted to work together guitar player singer makes sense right yeah i put the whole kind of let's do this you know let's see if we can do this and we put it together and it worked so i'm going wow it worked we got a band locked and loaded all i'm going to do is rehearse some new, some more stuff and we got a tour booked in uh, Europe. Yeah. You know, we want to do it. Good. That would be great. And so you'd go out as Toto or would you go out as Steve Lukather and Joseph Williams? Steve, well, you know, Luke and Joe, uh, Toto, you know, uh, Dogs of Oz is what we're calling ourselves. Yeah, the Dogs of Oz, kind of a little play on words. Uh, but that's what we're calling the tour. And, uh, you know, we got some new players and we're going to play our, you know, the total hits. And, the, the, you know, obviously we've got to play all the big hits and the, we'll play our solo stuff. We'll play deep cuts and the total stuff from ours. You know, got a great killer group of musicians. So, so we're keeping the total name alive. Yeah. David Page is very much a part of it. He's the granddaddy of Toto. You know, he, he worked on my record and he worked on Joe's record. He's still part of the R scene. He just can't physically tour anymore because he's not medically able to do it. He's just, he's, you know, 65 years old. It's like, I'm done. I can't get on the bus anymore, you know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Doesn't have to, so what the fuck, you know. Exactly. But he's still, part, he's still a part of the whole scene. And I, I run everything by him, you know. Okay, cool. And so um, so, so the album, how, how how did it come about then? Were you, so this, did you record it during lockdown this year? No, it was before. Right, okay. Right before, like the That's month lucky. before. Because I did the record in eight days. I finished it in eight days, you know, and then eight days to mix, so 16 days in total. Okay. Like the end of the mix, I had to come with the gloves and the mask and the whole thing, you know. Yeah, it was all done, all the solos, everything was done live. Uh, I overdubbed the vocals, that was it. Then, then we mixed it. Song a day, eight days, boom, eight songs. There we go again. There you see. That's you being your one take wonder. Well, you know, I hired the right guys. I got the right team together. I had a lot of help. I didn't do it all by myself, believe me. But it's been seven years, isn't it, since you've done um, any solo? Well, longer. You know, I mean, okay. you know, seven years since it came out. So I feel like eight, eight and a half years is the last time I thought about doing it, you know. God. So how come? Why now? Well, because it was the end of Toto. You know, it was like, you know, we did our last show uh, in October 19th. And we knew it was done there. That version of the band was done. We knew that. We yeah. knew that was our last. Show. So that configuration, Sayonara. And then with some time off and going through some legal stuff and Paige going, use the name, we paid for it. That gives me a right to, to play all the old songs, which I was there for all 15 incarnations of the band. I'm the only guy that has mm -hmm. and kept it alive and you know joe and i want to keep it alive and dave blessings like please do this please do this we pay a percentage to the families and then we use the name and everybody gets paid and it's whatever yeah so what is the sweet spot for you like when being in a band is it is it that kind of that moment when you've made it and you're playing the big stadiums, etc., or is it that bit where you get like the whiff of it and the possibility that oh my god Okay, guys. Well, the hunger. I mean, you know, when you're coming up, there's that hunger, you know, that you can't. I see it in my son. 
my oldest son is now his band Lavara is just coming out with their albums coming out next year. And he's really excited. And I've seen it all. I've seen myself at him, you know, the angst, the, the hunger. I want, I want it real bad, you know, you know, it's, it's interesting to see it from a, after 45 years in, you know. You got, I mean, what's been your highlight for your life? I mean, is there, is there sort of your, a, a guitar contribution that you've made that you're most proud of? You know, staying, well, actually, just having a long career, you know, just having, I always wanted to be a long, just give me a long career. That's all I wanted. And I've had, and I was given, granted my wish. There's still a lot more to come. So the best, is, you know, I'm not saying the best is yet to come. I'd like to think so, but, you know, I've, I've certainly keep trying. I keep trying. I still care. I still get up and play and practice in the morning. And I, cause I love to do it. I've been stuck in my house for a year, you know. Yeah. If it wasn't for my wonderful girlfriend, I'd probably kill myself. So how does it make you feel when you pick up the guitar and you're standing there holding it and playing it? Uh, out of body. Sort of like, sometimes I wonder how, uh, who's actually playing. It's funny, because you're at that stage where you can pick up a guitar and you can, how what's in your head, you can transfer it. Much. instrument i'm not yeah. quite there yet but i just think to be well, I've, been playing, well, you know, I've been playing for like you know since i was seven years old so i know i'm 63 so do the math yeah that's a long time yeah i mean you know but playing what i mean i started playing my first chords and stuff it's not like today where you learn all the stuff and you can go on the internet and stuff it's like it was very much more difficult back then to be able to learn how to play yeah for sure, you guitar was a real instrument and stuff. All that long hair and beetle music, you know, stuff. It was like. Matt, have you got one tip that, that um, sort of helped you on your guitar journey? Practice. It hurts at first, but practice. But when it hurts, after you play for a while, stop, stretch out. Don't you know? It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Yeah. Be patient. But stay sure. at it. You have to stay at it. To get good at anything, you got to put the time in. That's it. There's no trick to it. 